welcome back um so this is actually a video that i have been dreading making because i got the news today that my knee surgery i've been waiting over a year for is scheduled for a week from today so next wednesday saturday or saturday next wednesday the 22nd of september um so it is an acl reconstruction and uh, hopefully a meniscus repair and it is going to have me out of commission for working for about eight weeks and then about eight months before I can ride again um, obviously the goal is to get back on and ride in the eight months time but it's gonna be a long journey and just thought that I would share a little bit of my prehab slash post tab with you guys on my journey back into the saddle um yeah so it is wednesday the 15th today and it was raining which is why we're in the shelter tacking up but the sun just came out and there is actually a rainbow that way but yeah so we're gonna go for a little dressage ride now we do have a lesson scheduled tomorrow morning which will probably be our last <laughs> lesson and then there's just a bunch of tests and prehab stuff that I need to get done before next Wednesday. Um, my other half, Josh, he is going to be taking care of the horses, especially for the first kind of eight weeks while I am not walking and confined to the couch. Um, so yeah, Bubbly will just get the time off and <laughs> maybe she'll be less crazy than she has been by the time um, I'm back. Probably start with a whole bunch of groundwork, though. I don't think I'll be ready to get on this um, exuberant beast very quickly after coming back from that knee surgery. So, bittersweet video, but thought if I could make something to help out other riders who might end up needing knee surgery or, you know, surgery of any point and share my journey and maybe people can relate and maybe can't, but <laughs> figured I might as well do something with my time off. Uh, so yeah, more to come soon. We just had such a great beneficial dressage lesson. She did so well really 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 sad that we won't be able to do it for like nine months now and it's killing me a little bit because it was so good anyways those are my feelings you're cute that I would just share a few of the things. I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed the last couple days because um, obviously you don't get very much notice before knee surgeries. So yesterday we had to go and get hay. We're going to get closer to the end of the month because I won't be able to do it, um, obviously, when I've had my knee surgery. Um, trying to get clients organized and get them all settled before I go. And... There's a few things that people might not know. So depending on what knee surgery you get, the first time that I had mine done, so I had my ACL and my meniscus reconstructed back in 2016 as well. Um, and then I actually snapped that graft last year, which is why I need to get it done again. Um, but they gave me what's called a cryo cuff um, that I rented from the hospital actually when I did it the first time. And this time around, I learned they don't do that anymore. So you do have to find a place to get it, um, either rent one or buy one before your surgery. So I'm glad I called and asked about that. Today, I've been just, just been making a ton of phone calls. I had to book a COVID test for 48 to 72 hours before I went in. Um, depending on when you're watching this, maybe COVID will be gone. <laughs> so people can dream, right? Um, and... I have to get some other testing done at the lab the day before I go. So I was trying to book that, but it's too late. So I'm just going to have to go in as a walk-in and try to do that. 
And yeah, so I just called and you can actually buy cryo cuffs, they're called, and it's basically like a giant um, cooler and you put water and ice in it and it has a hose that attaches to a brace-like thing around your knee um, or I guess whatever area you do get done and it will keep cold water or ice cold water I guess so it's like icing your knee constantly and it was vital last time I got my knee done so I wanted to make sure I had I had one um, and I called the stores and they wanted like 400 bucks for it and when I called the hospital the orthopedic um, clinic is going to sell me one for $250 and then if you get a note from your surgeon which I'm going to seeing that it's like vital for you to have after surgery it can be written off by healthcare. So just thought I should share a couple little secrets that I'm apparently finding out <laughs> as I go through this journey for the second time. Um, whoops. I was really hoping to ride today, but there's like wind gusts outside right now of 80 miles per hour and we had a table just blow across the lawn. So I'm really hoping it will ease off so I can ride because I only have like four days left to ride, but... I don't know, I also don't wanna die and get bucked off in the wind, so I guess we'll see. <laughs> Just doing a lot of paperwork and reports and stuff now I have to get done before next Wednesday. So fun. You sippy girl. My goodness, we're so tired. We're so tired. What that sound. Hi. Hi, you see these? Little girl. Oh yeah. So tired. Hi. Oh, so sleepy. Oh, so sleepy. Hey, girl. There's my other sweet toys. Oh, good boy. One more thing to add is I did what's probably going to be my last little prehab gym session today um, just because of how the weekend is looking and I'm having to do a lot of things to get the horses ready for me to be <laughs> unavailable and for Josh to deal with them and just with work and stuff. Um, but I thought I took a couple videos because I thought it would be cool to show you guys what I've been doing to get ready and hopefully prepare my muscles as best as I can for surgery so that I come out better on the other side. So I will put some clips in now with maybe some voiceovers to let you know just the program I've been doing. All right, I'm going to start by saying that I am a registered kinesiologist. So I went to school um, to learn basically how to do exercises and rehabs correctly and use the correct muscles. So all of these exercises that I have done here, I have gradually worked up to. So I'm showing you the most advanced version of each one. So if you are just starting exercising and you haven't exercised before, I would highly recommend getting a professional to show you and teach you how to do the exercises so that you do not hurt yourself. So the first one that I did is a one-legged deadlift and I did progress to doing this on an upside down BOSU Ball. It's really really good for knee stability and stability in the hips and because you will be spending time on crutches on one leg it's great for working in the balance portion as well. So I do these from the front as well uh, or from the side as well as the front and um, you're gonna have to work at it. You might not get your foot in the right spot. It is important for your balance to get your foot in the right spot. But this is great for, like I said, all those little stabilizers around your knee that you are definitely going to need to have come back strong when you're done your surgery and you are actually able to weight bear again. But like I said, um, start slow. Start with just a one, start with actually a normal deadlift. But again, that can be a dangerous exercise if you don't know how to do it. So get someone who knows to show you and then progress to one legged deadlifts. And then eventually you can move yourself up to the BOSU ball. The next exercise is a goblet squat, so same thing. You're gonna start doing it on the ground without weight, just with your body weight, then gradually increase to adding weight, and then finally you can do it up on the BOSU ball. Same thing to add that stability component in so that all your muscles are able to work in the correct way. Um, I actually got to the point where I couldn't do a squat 
not on the BOSU ball because I needed the correct muscles to be working for my knee to not have pain, but my knee was pretty messed up. So <laughs> I do like all these exercises too as a rider because of the instability component and using the BOSU ball. They really help riders who maybe don't put the exact same amount of pressure in each stirrup or always tip one way or if your instructor is always telling you that you're tipping to one side. The BOSU ball is great because it makes it so that you have to put equal amount of weight in each foot and it will then correspond with all of the muscles that keep you equal on both feet which will then um, allow you to be able to hold that equal pressure in both feet in the stirrups when you're on your horse a whole lot better than if you were just doing it on the ground. You could maybe cheat and still be um, favoring one side than the other. I did a lot of core as well. So this one's a rocking plank on the BOSU ball. So it just makes sure you work your front abs as well as your obliques. And then it is a lower body kind of glutes, so your bum and leg workout as well because you need to hold the body in that plank like position with a straight line from shoulder to hip to heel and you need to make sure for that one that your hands are right under your shoulders not out in front of you so you don't tweak your shoulders this next one that i'm setting up for is a one-legged glute bridge so same thing you would start on the ground without weight using two legs and then you would gradually increase to one leg and when you can do that correctly you would add weight and then you would bring in the bosu ball I do say two to three sets and 10 to 15 reps of everything, but that's just a generic thing. You would start at one set of eight to 10, gradually increase the amount of reps to 15. If you do more than 15, you're working more endurance, but it's to each their own. Um, three sets is kind of ideal if you can work your way up to that. I do weighted crunches, but you can do any crunches, but the most important thing that I like to do is spinal protection. So I only do crunches. I make sure my back does not arch away from the mat below me, um, and I only go up a little bit. Full sit-ups use more of your back, so I don't actually like that. I like to focus just on my core. And then assisted pull-ups, so same thing. You would start with a lat pull-down machine at a light weight, which would work similar muscles to this, and then you could work your way up to assisted pull-ups with two bands, two thick bands, and then glad gradually work your way up. I got to the point where I could do it with just one thick band. Then this is another core exercise, same thing. You wanna look at your spinal position, so your back should not be arching off of the seat behind you. It should stay in a neutral spine. And then I did forward and side to side to work again, my front and each side of my obliques for my abs. And then one-legged leg curls was huge for me. Um, it didn't hurt my knee and just getting the one side as strong as the other because my right knee that I had surgery on the first time or right leg, I guess, has never been as strong as my left. So it's really important to do one-legged things before your surgery because you're gonna be on one leg and you're gonna want that leg that is weaker to come back um, just as strong as the first time. There are many more exercises that you could do that would be awesome and great before a knee surgery. These ones are just my favorite and they're the ones that I find most beneficial, um, especially for equestrians and horse riders. But like I said, don't do these if you have never exercised before. Seek some professional help so that you're not going to hurt yourself. It is very easy to hurt yourself if you do exercises incorrectly and yeah just find someone you trust that can make you a program but prehab before a surgery is super important for the outcome after and how quickly you will bounce back so to speak so for me i want to get back in the saddle as quickly as possible and it was something that i made sure that i got in while i could this is what i mean by those 80 kilometer an hour wing gusts that i won't be riding in but wanted to ride in these guys are all hiding in here with snakes. Because it's scary in the wind. So scary. Okay, bubbles. You don't even know me like that. Are you past my time? Put you on my mind. Come a little closer like All right guys, it is Saturday the Oh, yeah, there we go. I thought my watch died. Saturday the 18th of September. It's a Saturday before my surgery on Wednesday. And checked another couple things off the box today. So we went a couple towns over and got <laughs> $600 worth of supplements for the horses to have in the next 6 months so that I won't have to 
go while I am recovering. Um, I've been doing a couple little things. I'm going to have to deworm them tomorrow for the fall because I don't want to do that when I'm on crutches and, you know, going to be on some pretty heavy painkillers at the start. Uh, I'm just organizing my tack room slash laundry room right now, trying to get it a little bit organized before everything. And yeah, lots of things you don't think about. I have to get a COVID test done tomorrow. I'm going to try to have a photo shoot with the ponies if I can and the dog just because it'll be the last one for a little while. So it would be nice to have some updated pictures of the family. So just keeping you updated on all the different things that I'm having to do. It's also our water heater is in here too, so don't mind that. But yes, I like professional choice saddle pads as you can see <laughs> behind me. <laughs> Cute horse. We fixing your fence. Last minute fence repairs, so they're all good to go while I am not. How pretty is the light right now? Oh, you dumped your food bucket. You're so sweet. Last thing before I tack up, um, anyone else ever had a long-standing rehab surgery that they went through and gotten back to riding after? Let me know. Give me the details. Give a girl some confidence. <laughs> Might need it. <laughs> no. Picture. Picture. Sunday, September 19th. I just had a wonderful dressage ride on my pony, looking rather nice because I also had a photo shoot done with them today before I can't anymore, just to have a few more memories and such. Some nice pictures before I have crutches and a calf, hey? Yeah. Um, yeah, I also had to go and get a COVID test today before I go in the hospital on Wednesday. So I did that this morning. So yeah, basically a weekend of getting things done that need to be done before Wednesday. Look at how pretty the sky is, Bubbles. What do you say? <laughs> Isn't that pretty? <laughs> what? I need to go guys um it is currently tuesday september 21st so the day before my surgery been a couple of hectic days um worked yesterday long day did manage to sneak a ride in last night which was a little bit sad but that's okay our second last ride um I did have a our last little meadow stroll this morning and then I had to go and get a blood test done at the clinic today because it's 
the day before my surgery and that's what the test had to get done um and yeah that went a little bit over time so wasn't actually able to make my client I had after so I came home and I have a little bit of time now and I'm walking my puppy for our last walk in my one of my favorite places to walk around here. It's just a nice big hay field but the the owners are nice enough to give us a path on the edge to walk the dog so she can run and play yeah but yeah, I also won't be able to do that for quite a long time after my surgery. So just thought I'd take um, advantage of the beautiful sunny day. So yeah, today after I get home, I will go back to work for a couple of clients and then I have to go to the hospital and pick up what's called a cryo cuff. It's a machine that keeps basically ice water on my knee at all times. Maybe I'll show you that at a later date, but pretty cool it was really essential last time I had a knee surgery because I have had two knee surgeries before um, yeah it just kind of seems surreal to be honest that this is my last day of walking around so a lot of emotions a lot of everything I'm just listening to country music and trying to enjoy the moments with my dog I really enjoyed our last little trail ride this morning despite how cold it was it's gotten quite cold and it was quite early because my first client was at 8 or something 8 15 I think but yeah, so anyways, a little bit of an update. Don't really know how I'm feeling. Kind of seems surreal. Kind of sad, I guess. Um, yeah, so I am just going to try to get everything organized tonight before tomorrow. They call me between 12 and 2 today with the time um, for my surgery, and then I can plan from there. Yeah. We just met another dog back there, an owner in the field, so I put it down for a second. But yes, my surgery, I could have to be at the hospital two cities over as early as 6 15 in the morning so tonight's just gonna be yeah making sure the horse's supplements are done for josh i did pick up like six months worth of supplements on the weekend that was expensive uh, all the supplements are done and measured out for as long as i can basically uh, i don't know when i'll be feeling well enough to sit up and be able to have my knee down and i don't know for i don't know when i'll be able to do that kelly come and then, yeah, we'll plan when I can get to bed, plan. Josh is off tomorrow, so he's going to stay and pick me up. It's just a day surgery. I can get 75 minutes or something. But there'll be a lot of pre and post stuff that I'll have to stay at the hospital for. And then I will be home to start the next nine months at least of my life recovering in rehab. So it's going to look a lot different. But yeah, if you want to follow my journey, stay tuned. Maybe I'll be able to bring you guys all the way till I'm back to hopefully riding the bubbly horse. Yeah, yeah, definitely gonna miss it all. Walking, riding, everything, but what can you do? My knee's actually been super sore the last couple weeks, so it's a surgery that I need to get done and it'll be nice to hopefully be 100% on the other side. This is Callie's favorite part of our walk. <laughs> The creek where she gets to be an alligator. I don't know if she will today. It's pretty cool. Oh, there she goes. She like floats with her tail out and her mouth open on top of the water. Hey, hey girl. Oh, there you go. Nice and cool. The working feet. Also, I will take this time to list a few things that I have found out getting ready for this that you might not think about. Um, so obviously taking care of the horses, you want to make sure you have all enough supplements and stuff, uh, especially if you're the only one who knows how to buy them, like me. So that while you're away, people can take care of them. Um, your horse's feet. I have organized with my trimmer to pull Bubbly's Duplo shoes at some point in the next little bit here. Um, and then I'm going to leave her actually barefoot for the winter. And who knows, maybe fingers crossed she can grow a better foot. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, just uh, coming back. That's a 
that's something to think about when you're recovering and they're recovering and fresh from the winter. So that's why I'm going to do a bunch of groundwork. Um, all the testing you'll have to do, you have to make time for that. COVID test was negative already. They were really quick about that, actually. I think I got it on Sunday. They texted me Sunday night. Um, I just got to do the swish test. It was super easy, not, not, not invasive or anything at all. And yeah, rides, organizing rides, um, picking all that up, cleaning areas of your house because I will be on crutches. So you're gonna wanna not have a lot of clutter around. Um, and if you have any other animals, taking care of that. I don't have kids, but <laughs> pretty sure you're not gonna be able to take care of your kids for a while after. I think I am on my back for a good couple weeks. Physio, you might wanna have a physio lined up before. I'm lucky enough to work with some because I'm a kinesiologist, so they are already in the wings ready to help me when I get back. Um, and making sure you have all of the things you're gonna need for drugs after. So Josh is gonna pick up my prescription while I'm in my surgery for my like big pain meds. And then you wanna make sure you have Tylenol and Advil on hand. I don't know where my dog just went. There you are, she went back in the creek. Um, and anything that you can think of for that, someone who's gonna be able to help you um, if you don't have someone who lives in your house because yeah, you're not gonna be very mobile. So it is a bigger surgery or a knee surgery if you're having any sort of surgery that's gonna keep you on your back for a while. Um, I also got hay last week because I was gonna get that later. Won't be able to, so make sure I had enough hay for the winter. And also I went over the meds, different things with Josh, he already knows, but so he knows what to do if they're colicking. Um, Sadie's a bit weird when she colics, so she has a special bridle you have to give her banamine in, making sure I have enough of those drugs on hand. I also ordered her more of her Prevacox that she gets to make sure I had enough of that for the next six months or so. Um, yeah, that's all I can think of for right now, but those are the things that I have thought of that I have needed. And, oh, the cryocuff, make sure for me, it was a huge for my last knee surgery, so I made sure I had one of the, I well, I'm picking up today that I'm gonna have one of those. So I think they give me the brace at the hospital that I'm gonna have. Really hope so, because I don't have it. <laughs> Hopefully I'll wake up with it and I can rent it from them. But yeah, I'll let you know, we'll see. And that takes us to the end of part one, including our prehab and our need to know tips for knee surgery, especially if you're an equestrian. Thank you guys so much for watching. The next part will start on the morning of my knee surgery. So if you liked this video at all and you want to stick around for more, or if you've liked any of my videos so far, please like, comment, and subscribe. And you can join us for the rest of our journey. Thanks so much, guys.